It's time now for Word Alive from the Upper Room in Gatesville, North Carolina, with Pastor Eric Earhart. Join us in seeing lives changed by the power of God's Word. You're invited to join us in person on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. at 807 Main Street in Gatesville, North Carolina. You can also listen to our live audio podcast at www.ustream.com. And now, today's message. And what we forget sometimes, we're on the winning team. Amen. Amen. He's won. He is the champion. And we got to realize that, hey, life's tough. You know, we go through some battles. We go through some things. You know, as a Christian, hey, this, this thing even gets harder because the Lord has called, called us to be different, to be separate. And that's a tough thing to experience because everybody wants to be accepted. Everybody wants to be loved. You don't want to be different. You don't want to be the <clears throat> excuse me. You don't want to be the outcast. You don't want to be the one that people are making fun of. You don't want to be the one that people are stepping on or not wanting to associate with. But hey, the Lord said it's going to be that way. But we got to remember we're on the winning team. We're on the winning team. And we need to be excited about that. If we'll go ahead to the first verse, you know, the Lord sometimes just got to remind me because you can get overwhelmed, whether it's bills, whether it's just people. You know, I'm blessed to deal with people day in and day out at work. And people, as Pastor Eric, you heard him say, the ministry would be easy if it wasn't for people. I mean, that'd be true. You know, you got to deal with people's heartaches, people's having a bad day. You know, I get to deal in sales, and any of you that's been in sales, you know, whether it's been in a McDonald's or Chick-fil-A or been in a Sherwin-Williams, you got to deal with people. And the thing about people, we're most concerned usually about only what's with us. We're not worried about that other person. So if I'm having a bad day and I just want to let you know I'm having a bad day, usually I'll do it. And, but praise God, we still got to remember, even though we're going through things, we're on a winning team. Amen. We got a hope. And uh, just wanted to go here to 2 Timothy 3.10. Here's Paul admonishing his son in the Lord, you know, just telling him these things. Just he was a guy that's already been through and was going through still, but he wanted to impart to his son in the Lord saying, listen, this walk is tough. You know, when you sign the dotted line to be a Christian, to be a follower of Christ, you signed up for a hard road. But the reward is worth it, and that's what we've got to keep in mind. But I just want to talk about Paul here and uh, go here, and he's just kind of giving you some of his experience. But he said, You, however, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecution, sufferings. I mean, look at that. He's just saying, Man, you know what I've been through. You know I've went through something. Timothy, you've seen the things I went through. And just look at that word sufferings or in the King James, it's afflictions. But that means hardships, trials. And we all go through them, whether it's financial, whether it's relational, whether it's just, you know, man, I'm just struggling with depression. Am, am I worth anything? What, what's my purpose here in life? We struggle with hardships in life. But he says, what kind of things happened to me in Antioch and Iconium and Lystra, the persecutions I endured, yet the Lord rescued me from them all. We've got to remember, we're on the winning team. Amen. And I'm just here and want to encourage you to remind you of that this morning. Hey, you might be bogged down this morning. Say, you know what? Life's hard right now. You just don't know what I'm going through. You just don't know the things I face because that's the way all of us kind of internalize things is, well, you don't know what I'm going through. I know you're going through something, but you just don't know what I'm going through. But the Lord said that there will be trials. There will be tribulations. He even said in James, count it all joy when you fall into tribulations. And we need to have that mindset. The Lord dealt with me early on when I was a young Christian. You know, man, every time I had a little trial or something didn't go my way, I was just ready, oh gosh, this thing's too hard. I'm just ready to give up. And he says, son, you need to change your mindset and look at those situations as stepping stones and not stumbling blocks. 
Because too many times we look at them as something that's just going to trip us up. Oh, here we go again. Instead of looking, Lord, what are you doing through me? Lord, strengthen me. Lord, use me. Lord, make me into something different than what I was. And this is what Paul is sharing with Timothy. And he said, in fact, everyone, listen to this promise. You know, we love the promises of God. You know, give and it shall be given. We love that, man. You know, we love the promise of eternal life. Praise God. That's the reason we're here this morning. But there are some other promises we're not so keen about. And this might be one of them. But he says, in fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. You know, some people say, well, one gauge of how you're living godly is are you being persecuted? Jesus said, they hated me, they're going to hate you. But we're on a winning team. This ain't a thing, I, I don't, because what, what happens, we get concentrated on the problem, like this is the problem, and this is all we can see. And we can't see deliverance, we can't see Jesus, all we can see is the problem. That's all we want to talk about, and that's all we think about. And the Lord is saying, you're on the winning team, but you're going to endure some things. You're going to go through some things, but I've made a way for you. He said He wouldn't allow us to be tempted more than we can bear. Amen? And that He always provides a way of escape. Amen. So we need to just, you know, rejoice and have a different attitude, have a different mindset. You know, I read the, the apostles when they first, you know, got uh, uh, reprimanded by the Pharisees and Sadducees and the Sanhedrin, the, leader, the religious leaders of the time. They were whipped and beaten. And their response was, it says, they left there and walking and leaping and praising God for they were worthy to suffer shame for His name. That's a powerful statement. And that's the way we, we need to have joy. Lord, you know, I, I don't know what's happening, Lord. My finances ain't making sense, Lord. My kids are going crazy. Man, my boss is on me. But all I know, Lord, you said count on all joy. I'm going to make it through. Lord, I'm holding on because I know you're on the winning team. And we need to be reminded of that, that we're on the winning team. That this thing ain't over, but there's a reward if we just hang on and stay on the team. I mean, how much of a joy is it to know? See, we can see the, the end almost from the beginning. See, most times if you ever have been in sports or, you know, competed in anything, you don't know what the outcome's going to be before a game. You know, you go to a team you've never seen before, players you've never seen, you're like, ah, maybe we'll win, maybe we won't. I don't know, there's some big dudes over there, and we're a bunch of small guys. And if it's basketball, that ain't a good thing usually. You don't know the outcome. But we're in a race that we already know the outcome. We just got to stay on the team, amen? We got to be excited to be on the team. And again, this is what I feel Paul's here just pouring into Timothy. Timothy, you're going to experience some things. But man, understand, God's delivered me out of them all. You know, the promise in uh, Psalms 34, it says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Amen? Amen? Hey, that's a great promise. We can hang on. And then uh, Paul goes here, while evil men and apostles will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. Go to the next verse. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and become convinced of because you know those from whom you learned it. You know, we need to get hooked with people that we can see in their life there's victory. Amen. That we can see they've overcome some things. You know, don't get around people that you see stumbling just as you are. It ain't going to be no help to you. But you find somebody that's got victory in the light. Somebody that's been through the fire and has come out on the other side and say, you know what, I need to be with that person. And then trust the Lord and His Word. Know the, the hope you have in Him. And we're going to talk about that here shortly. And how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. We can trust the Word. And all Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. The biggest reason we fail sometimes is we decide to do it our way. That we say, you know what, God, I'm shortcutting. I don't know. I mean, what you say probably would work, but I think I know better. 
I'll tell you what, Lord, you know, I know this book has stood the test of time, but you know what? I'm a smart guy. I got a four-year degree. Hey, I've been, you know, around some of the scholars of the land, and I know better. If you don't do it his way, he can't bless you. If you're going to be on his team, how many people go, and, and I mean, especially, I always use sports analogies because I'm an old sports guy, but... You know, you go and coach and say, okay, coach, this is how we're going to do it. You know, the coach is the one that tells you to get out on the field. He's the one that tells you when you come back in. He tells you where you need to be on this play and that play. God's done the same thing for us. He's told us where we need to be and what we need to do. If you're on this team, you've got to do it his way. And sometimes while we're going through hardships is guess what? We're not doing it his way. We're doing it our way. And we're getting frustrated and wondering, God, why I'm... Because we just think, well, I'm just your child. You bless me. And we get this thing backwards. We realize he's the champion. Do you realize, even though Satan, he allowed Satan to knock him down, but he did it willfully. He said, I have power to take my life up. And he said, I have power to take it down. Satan had no power over him. He just allowed it to happen because he was going to fulfill the purpose of the Father. And we need to know when we do it his way, he's going to be our advocate. He's going to be our defender. He's going to oversee his word. It ain't so much where we're so important. It's that his word, he will defend his word. Sometimes, follow what I'm saying, we think we're so important. Well, I'm Christ's child. I'm, and praise God, the Lord loves us but he's a defender of his word. Even the Lord said, I exalted my word above my name. And we need to realize that. We've got to do it his way. And then so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. You know, we need to be equipped. We need to know these things. That's the reason he's telling them, man, we need to tell new believers and young Christians, hey, you're going to go through something, but don't be dismayed. Don't be discouraged. God is going to bring you to the other side. There are going to be storms. There's going to be trials. There's going to be tribulations. But God is going to bring you to the other side. See, in that video we watched, there's two Jesus we could uh, sometimes serve. We can serve the one that was getting beaten and see him as that. It's like, well, you know, he got beat up. And that's just the way it's going to be. Or you, can see, or you can serve that risen Lord. The one that we've seen the grave was empty. We just celebrated Easter. And we don't re sometimes realize the significance of that. He is not to be found these days on earth. Not in the form of a man. He's a risen God. In fact, he is so risen when John, one of his disciples, I always loved telling this, who became an apostle, John, wrote in Revelations, when he seen this resurrected Jesus, he fell as dead. Right. But this was a guy when he was a man that laid on his bosom. But when he seen the resurrected Jesus, it said he fell as dead, and the Lord had to say, Fear not, for his I, John. Let's go to the next verse. Because we understand we're on the winning team. This thing's already been done. We just got to stay on the team. We got to play by his rules. Amen? And be excited about it. Amen? This ain't a thing to come. And, you know, we celebrated uh, Friday, you know, Sister Linda Harrison. You know, just to be with the Lord. But that's what it's all about. You're going to die. Amen? I'm not a genius, but I guarantee you, I mean, I could be a, pro a great prophet. You're going to die. Where are you going to be? What team do you want to be on? Do you want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant? Or do you want to hear, depart from me, ye worker of iniquity, and enter into utter darkness? Which Jesus are we serving? Too much, we let the world come in on us. And again, our problems get so big, and we get so weighted down, and I mean, we can't even lift our arms to praise them. But we've got to learn in the face of adversity that we look at it and say, Lord, it doesn't matter. I know I, you've won, and I'm on your team. It doesn't matter what Satan's trying to throw at me. You've won. I'm on your team. I mean, we could go to Romans 8, nor death, nor persecutions. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. And here in Ephesians, God is just telling us, I've won. He's just reassuring us. And I'm going to try to read this because I know we're running out of time. 
But I keep asking that our God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Uh, I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope which he has called you. You need to know the hope that he's called you. Because if you don't have hope, you're not going to endure. You're not going to have hope for uh, something and keep on pursuing it. I mean, you would not work if you didn't have hope of a paycheck every week. Hey, I'm just going to be real. Hey, I'll go do something I enjoy. But I endure it because I have a hope there. Amen? But we got a greater hope we're talking about, which is called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. And his incomparably great power for us who believe that power is like the working of his mighty strength. We need to know who we belong to, which he exerted in Christ when he raised them from the dead and seated them at the right hand in the heavenly realms. And look at the power he's given them. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. Do you understand he's bigger than anything you're going to encounter? He is the Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is the author and finisher. He's made you more than a conqueror. He's made you the head and not the tail. And we need to get a mindset that has that and not worry about life and let it defeat us. But we start being overcomers as he called us to be. Amen. We're more than overcomers through him. Again, it ain't on our own, but it's through him that we can take on life. And people can see Christ in us, the hope of glory. Who wants to serve a Jesus when they see it in others that are not happy about him? They're not excited about his coming. We need to have that excitement. It's like, Lord, the reason I'm here, the reason I'm showing up here is I have a hope today. And we're about to talk about that hope. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head of everything for the church, which is his body. So understand something. If we're in Christ, amen, then even if we're the small toe, he said he put all things under his feet. So the way I see that is if we're in the body, all things are under us. And you need to ask yourself, are you in the body? Am I on that winning team? And we're going to have a, a call and have the elders come forth in, in a few more minutes after this next set of scriptures we read. And just say, hey, am I on the winning team? This thing is worth it. It is worth it. And we've got to get that mindset to know, Lord, this thing is worth it. The reason I endure it, and then you can endure hardships. Jesus, we've seen bits and pieces, of course. We try to reenact what happened, you know, just from Scripture. But, I mean, did you see the scars, the crown of thorns, the cross? He said he endured all of it. What? He endured it all for the hope that was before him. We're going to do the same thing. Doesn't the Bible tell us to pick up our cross and deny ourselves? So go to Revelations. We're going to go to Revelations. Amen. It's exciting to go in Revelations. Not many people like going there. Uh, Revelation should be 21 verses 3 through 8. If not, I can read it for you. But we have a hope. You know, I tell everybody we teach first principles class, the reason we go through what we go through is we've got a hope. Amen. There's an end. And there's a reward. There's a good reward, and there's a bad reward. A reward we always look is good, but it can be bad also. It's just where your faith is. What you endured... But this is what's awaiting us. And understand, and Pastor Eric, he touched in it the other day, or maybe it was a Sister Lena's funeral, but it ain't about this life. It's about the one to come. There's preaching out there, listen, that tells you, oh, it's about this life. It's about you having the best. And man, if that's true, some people would say, Jesus stinks. There's some people that die at an early age. How do you explain that if God wanted you to have the best here? 
There's some people to get sick and live a sickly life and, you know, just seem to struggle. How, how do you explain that to them? That God wants you to have the best right now. He wants you to have the big white house and the picket fence and the three cars. We've seen that video of God's pie. That's a reality here in the U.S. And in a lot of places. But when I know that this thing's about forever being with Him, then, you know what? I can understand why some people die early. Because it ain't about this life. You're going to be dead way longer you're going to be alive. Again, man, that's wisdom from above. Just take it, you know, write it down. I can tell you, you can count on that. You're going to be dead a lot longer you're going to be alive. But we've got a hope. We've got a hope, man, and we can be excited this morning because it doesn't end here. It just begins here. Amen? And we can be excited because we've got eternity to be with Him. And this is where John and the Lord's talking to him and giving this revelation. And he starts talking about this hope to John here. And John heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. Amen. We got a hope. Amen. We got a hope this morning. Need to get aside. He who is seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down for these words are trustworthy and true. You can count on them. Amen. You can take them to the bank as we say it. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To whom is thirsty, I will give the drink without cause from the spring of water of life. He who overcomes, this is the verse, he who what? Overcomes. You've got to overcome some things. There are going to be some obstacles in your life and you need to be able to overcome them, amen? Jesus said he overcame them and the same spirit that was in Christ Jesus, guess what? Quickens our mortal bodies. We can be overcomers. He even calls us that. And we need to be excited about it, that we have a hope. He said, because he who overcomes will what? Inherit all this. He just ain't giving it to anybody. You need to be overcomer. And if you're letting life overcome you, then you need to question yourself and say, Lord, I want to be overcomer. I'm on your team because I know your team overcomes. Your team is one. And Lord, I'm excited about that. That's the team I want to be on. Amen? And he said, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. We need to be overcomers. People need to look around and say, you know what, man, that John Wynn now, I watched that guy, and that guy's overcome some stuff. You know, he ain't over there sobbing and crying at how bad life is and how tough it is. Man, he's over there praising God, giving him glory, talking about how he's overcome. And a brother can give you a testimony, I know, of what God has brought him through. But there are a lot in here. I mean, he's just an example of what God has brought you through. And people need to see that, that Christ is a risen Savior. He's alive and well today. He's still moving in his people. He's not dead. His reward is with them. We've got to be overcomers because the sad fact, there is the other side of this. And it says, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexual immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, their place will be in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. That's the end. That's the curtain call. Where will you be? We get to decide, amen? It's our decision. You know, too many times we look on God to do everything for us. That's our decision. And the Lord showed me the difference between an overcomer and one that fell in the cowardly side is unbelief. Is they don't believe in that hope. Because see, when you're firmly convinced that what, who he is, because the Bible tells us what? That faith, without faith, it's impossible to please God. But those who come to him must first believe he what? He is, and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. When you believe that he's got a hope, 
when you believe that He's promised and He's true what He said, that you're going to a place with no more tears, no more death, no more sorrow. When you're convinced of that, now you don't matter what fiery hell comes at you in life. You're like, you know what? I'm believing in this hope because He said it, and I'm assured of it, and it doesn't matter what's coming my way because I'm pressing toward that mark. Amen? But when we don't believe it, why do it? Man, this stuff's hard. I ain't for sure if it's real or not. I just, I just don't know. It's, it's, do I really want to go through this? Do I really want to sacrifice my life? You know, Pastor Eric read about that the other day. You know, that if this thing ain't true, we're a laughing stock. He said, we're the most miserable of all people. Because what you're doing is stupid. Why would you even be baptized for a dead man, it says? Why? Or are you convinced that this thing is real? That he is who he says he is? And that that's a, seems simplistic. I know we're in church and everybody, yeah, I believe he's God. I believe, is he? Well, when he says go, do you go? When he says bow, do you bow? And we've got to all answer that for ourselves. You know, Peter had to answer it for himself. You know, Jesus asked, these guys that were with him, they seen him raise the dead, open the blind eyes. You know, they saw Lazarus come out of the tomb. And Jesus still asked Peter and said, Peter, who do men say that I am? And he's like, well, some say you're the prophet. And, you know, some people say, you know, you're this and that. But Jesus made it personal then. He says, well, Peter, who do you say I am? And Peter's response was, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Hey, blessed are you, for flesh and blood has not revealed this, but my Father which is in heaven. We've got to have a revelation of who Jesus is and what our hope is so we can run this race with joy. Because too many times we're getting sidetracked because of these little hurdles that get in front of us. These little situations in life. And they're coming. They're coming. Understand, this life is going to be full of trials and tribulations. But are you going to sit and moan and groan about them? Let me tell you, the children of Israel did it, and they never saw the promised land. But the ones that had a different spirit, the Caleb's and the Joshua's, that said, you know what, we're able to take this land, Lord, because you said it. And because I know he who said it is faithful and just, and he's going to do what he said. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Yeah, there's giants, but it doesn't matter. we got the Lord God Almighty on our side. Oh, I know there's walled cities, but it doesn't matter. we got a God that just opened a Red Sea. I know that it's going to be tough, this land. We don't know what fruit it's going to bring, but I know you fed us manna from heaven. I know you're going to take care of us. And it said those two men had a different spirit about them. We got to have a different spirit about us in this day. You know, there's a recession, man, and I mean, people losing jobs. There's the government seems definitely to be not for us, but against us. It doesn't matter. We're on the winning team. The Lord said these things are going to happen. If you remember in the scripture, Timothy said they're going to be evil men. They're going to wax worse and worse. He said, "Don't worry about it. God's giving you the victory. You hold on to the hope." You keep holding on and pressing forward. Don't let the ways of this world hold you back, but keep pressing forward. 